Hi, welcome to the channel. My name is Chris. I'm a real world flying instructor with over 2000 hours worth of experience, including flying the real Hawk T1. In this video, we're going to take a look at the Mac loop, including how to get there using basic navigation techniques and the full talk through of the features that you fly around the Mac loop before recovering low level back to RAF Valley. This is the basic route that I've laid out in uh, Sky Vector. Here's a low level entry point at Lake Bala. It's a 40 mile medium level leg that should take about five to six minutes. Then down to the Mac loop, which I'll fly here before coming back up towards the A5 pass and recovering back to RAF Valley. Whilst I remember, please chuck in a like uh, just to support the channel. Even better, throw in a subscribe as well, just so that you don't miss out on future posts that I make. I plan to do one a week at least. Uh, and the next video to this may well be the, the planning considerations that went into this plan and the time and fuel calculations required. But with that in mind, let's jump into the cockpit, get the thing started up and get ourselves down to the Mac loop. This is going to be a quick start. You may well see, or you may have seen my uh, video tutorial on a cold and dark. This is just going to be me rattling through the checks um, to get the thing going as quick as I can. Parking brake is on, the oxygen is selected on. On the left, I'm going to select the battery on. I'm going to switch my radios on. Down this panel here, you can switch VHF, UHF on for listening and switch the rotary switch to UHF uh, to transmit on UHF. I'm going to switch the nav lights to on to make sure people know that it's manned. And I'm going to remove the features outside like the steps, the chocks, and the covers. The fuel pump goes, in fact, the LP cock can go on, the fuel pump can go on. These switches can stay as is. The flaps are going to remain up for now. Uh, so that is set basic uh, altimeter setting. I need to pop into the back seat to make sure I've made those switches correctly as well. In the back, master ignition switch is going to be on and the anti grid is going to be on. Back to the front seat, I think we're good to start. I'm going to leave it. In fact, I might put the transponder to standby at this stage and that to normal. Two anti calls to red. Good to start. Signal, talking to air traffic. Let's go ahead and start this up. Start relight button, gets the GTS spooling up. There she is. And the start switch to start. Rotation is green, RPM is increasing. 15 to 20%. Throttle to idle. I don't know why the pushback starts each time I do that. If you know, please put a comment in and we can all learn. Okay, the engine will be started by the time we get to 52%. And I'll start switching everything else on. The starter flaps can go to mid. Uh, I can switch that on. I can switch that on. I can switch the taxi light on. Because we're close to the runway, it's just over there. I'm going to switch my lights on as well. I'm also going to put some panel lighting on just so that you can see things a little clearer. And we'd normally do it on taxi out, but I'm going to anti skid to on. High 2 needs to be reset. See the pressure rising, the high 2 caption will go out. What I should have done for engine start is shut the canopy. But now it's started, I can lock it as well. Uh, all the captions are out, and I think we are good to go. Ah, let's have some pito as well. Pito heat is on. The other thing I always forget is this rudder pedal lock. It needs to be off before you can actually turn. The plan is, I've set the wind. In fact, let's have a quick look at the weather. Uh, Wind are set at 10,000 feet from the west, 20 knots. Otherwise, uh, the cloud is as you see it, and it's July, so the sun is fairly high. Okay, because we're navigating, I'm going to get my stopwatch ready. I'm using the Windows Basic Stopwatch. Three, two, one, hack, brake release. Wind is from the right, so I'm anticipating probably a bit of left rudder required. 120 knots unstick. 10 degrees nose up, gear, flat. Don't trim until you get to 200 knots. 
Again, flap up by 200 knots. There's the speed. I'm going to lower the nose. About 6 degrees nose up to accelerate. I'm going to run my head into 1,000 feet. And because the wind is blowing me from the right, I'm going to select 230 as my heading. There's 300 knots. I'm going to climb up to 10,000 feet. Nine thousand feet, start to anticipate to level off. Light altitude overshoot, but nothing gross. Accelerate up to 0.7 Mach. This aircraft is quite tricky to trim. I can show you the real ones a lot simpler. Power back to about 95% to start with to hold 0.7. That took me about 1 minute 40, maybe 1 minute 50 to get to a level off. Before I descend, I want to go through my descent checks. I'm checking my fuel is good. Now, I've forgotten to reload this fuel. Um, remember, these aircraft will load with 50% of the fuel. It's going to be fairly tight for me in terms of getting this uh, mission complete, but we'll go for it anyway. As we're cruising out here, you can see the weather is decent off to the west. Using a bit of altitude there because I'm flying from outside. By the way, I am flying and commentating and doing the camera work all at the same time, so please don't judge me too harshly. And descending. I'll select idle, aim for about 360 knots in the descent. That's a thousand feet to our safety altitude. Now I'm going to cheat. It's a flight sim, so I'm going to keep going down and just hope for the best. 4,000. Come on ground. Oh, there you go. Typical Welsh weather. So we're looking for a lake. Come on lake. Have confidence. I've come down slightly early so I can acquire said lake. The weather down here is rubbish. And as it happens... There's our lake. Lake Bala. So now I can accelerate to 420 knots. About 95 to 92% RPM will hold us here. I know the next heading is 220 or thereabouts. Navigation turns at low level of 4G. I'm going to reset the clock. Landing by the hack in 3, 2, 1, hack. Time is running, 1 minute 50 on hitting a 220 will take us to the Mac loop. And we can ease ourselves down to 250 feet as we go. Valley opens up here, I know it's 220, I'm not going to hold that because that will take me to the entrance. Looks like there's a little bit of weather, we're going to press on down as long as I can see through it. And there's the entrance to the Mac loop. On the west side, that's the right as we face it, is CAD West and CAD East is on the other side. Very famous areas for photographers to sit. That jutter was probably just the uh, flight sim playground recording, uh, just popping up in the background. So entering here, flowing down towards the lake at the 12 o'clock. Weather is good. I like the fact that we have to fight it a little bit. I'll stay over the right hand side because the next turn is going to be left. Down towards Chorus. Anticipate the turn. Try and put the canopy nearest the granite on the inside of the turn. That way you know you're clear of the granite that's underneath the aircraft. When you roll into a steep turn Always put the power up to maintain your 420 knots. I want to fly a racing line down here as best I can. The weather is glorious now. And anticipate this turn. 4G. Well, that was six and a half. We can't follow this valley, so I'm just going to pop over the top of this one.
and on the left hand side you see a couple of wind turbines I know at least one of those is definitely accurate. Now we're coming down towards the south of the loop and the town on the right of the nose is McCuntleth which is what the loop's uh, named after. No power and returning to the east. Now we can relax a little bit because this valley is fairly flat. The loop itself is about 21 miles round and at 7 miles a minute, which is what 420 knots gives us, that's about 3 minutes. When you turn, try and go towards 90. If you go less angular bank and pull 4G, you'll start climbing. And the idea is to stay down low. At the 12 o'clock, as we head north, you'll see this uh, hill here. On the left hand side it has a forest, on the right hand side it has not so much. And that's a really good feature. This will tell us when to turn left. Checking the fuel, 400 kilos, that should be enough for us. That sun's a bit blinding in the mirror, which is excellent. I love the immersion from that. I'm going to head up this hillside a little bit to give me turning room, and that's the turn. I don't know why that hillside is black, but there we go. Love the traffic on the road as well, that's pretty cool. 4G turn down the valley. And that is the Mac loop complete. I'm going to reset the clock now. Let's start it. I'm going to time for three minutes on a northerly heading. I think the plan I had says 006. So we'll roughly try and follow that. Whether to the west of us looks pretty tricky. Whether a head looks decent. I know 006 is the track I want to be following, but we don't want to go over the high ground because that's no fun. So I'm about 15 degrees left of my course. I'm past that hillside. I'm now going to bring it right, of course, by 15 degrees, and I'll hold this for about the same amount of time. That should put us back on the same course. But all the time I'm looking ahead at this weather. I love this weather, this is great. Uh, so it looks like it gets very close to the ground here. We want it to be 750 feet above ground to give us enough space legally. So I'm going to come left again and just follow this bit. I'm a little bit high, so that's not really helping me. back on course. We've done a minute 20, we're expecting another minute and a half at least. And from the route study I know that the valley should come in from the left, then from the right, and there might be a valley to the 12 o'clock. Now I know we're slightly left of course, because that's the way I've been flying, but this bit of weather looks better than that bit of weather. Weather ahead looks very similar to what we'd call a letterbox, which is to say that there's a small gap that you have to put your aircraft through. But again, as long as that cloud base is 750 feet above the ground, we're safe and legal to do it. Now we check our fuel here. We've got 320, so that's, uh, again, sufficient for other recovery. I am concerned about the A5 pass being out in cloud, but we're going to press through now, and if I need to bring up the weather just to show you the A5 pass, then I will do. About 40 seconds until we get to the point. Here's one valley that goes to the right. I said I was left of track. Well, you'll see if as I climb up here, there's that valley coming in, there's the valley going to the north, 
and there'll be another valley which I believe is that one that flows in so that's the Mercedes Junction type deal there more on that in the planning stage if you watch the next video that's 2 minutes 45 I can keep going here 15 seconds but I look to the left I can see a valley a valley and the valley that we want so let's go that way I'm way high because I'm too busy on taking nice photos and camera footage. Here we go, so I can already start thinking about exiting low level. I can think about the squawk that I need to set for valley, the lights stay on, the altimeters can be set, I can listen to the ATIS. I might not hear it because the big mountains are in the way. Uh, the radios, I'd have the channel, or at least I'd know the channels to go to once we exit. The squawk and I can note how long we've been in low level. Love the roads with the traffic on, that's really cool. This lake is a good confidence feature, we'll stay on the left hand side, racing line type deal. And then we've just got to hope the weather at Valley is uh, good enough for a visual recovery. Now at this stage I can slow down to 300 knots, I'm at 2,000 feet. And what I want to do is go to RAF Valley. I'm not going to do an instrument recovery because that's plainly dull after having done a lot of low level. I know from the map if I follow this way and then go north up the coast, the airfield is here. I could probably sneak down this road. Again this would be against procedure but I'm going to do it anyway because this is a flight sim. And instead of arcing all the way around to the runway we took off on, I'll go for the reciprocal runway 31. Uh, for reference, Canerfin airfield is over there on the south side just off the island. Good Orbeck scenery if you haven't checked that out. Recommend it. Uh, Mona airfield is over here somewhere. Which is... Could, that could be it. Which is a relief landing ground for uh, Hawks. This forest is a good lineup feature. Once you get to this forest, you can face up towards the runway. And I'll probably bring it back to 360 knots for the run and break. Now I'm going to make this a low break so I'm not climbing up into the cloud. So let's give this a shot. Idle. Roll, speed break, plenty of angler bank. You can pull to the buffet. Looking to roll out uh, one three, keep the speed break out for 200 knots. Downwind leg works out. Keep trimming. Uh, threshold speed is going to be 113, below 200, speed break is in, light is out, gear, flaps to mid, power up to 87% to hold the 150 knots, checking my spacing, the wind is from the west so it's probably blowing me a little bit wide, I've got gear, I've got flap, 45 degrees off from the threshold, flap goes down, power comes up, and about a 45 degree bank. Looking at the pappies for initial reference, I'm a bit low early. I got a bit slow early. Okay, speed is good. The glide path for the threshold is good. One one three is the speed. There's the speed. Idle. Flare. 
And that is the end of the mission. If you're still here, thanks for sticking around. I hope it was useful. I hope it was enjoyable. Uh, please stick a like on there as well. And if uh, even better, chuck a subscribe in. And that way you can get all the future videos when they get released. So until the next time, take care and fly safe.